Technology just amazes me. I can remember when the first DJI Phantom came out and I was just like, wow. It was a huge milestone for technology and seeing something like that was just incredible. And that was almost 10 years ago. And now we have the DJI Mavic 3 Classic. The DJI Mavic 3 Classic is a stripped back version of the 2021 release of the DJI Mavic 3 Pro. But how much of it has been stripped back? How much have you lost in comparison? As far as I could tell from flying it and using it and looking at the specs on the internet, just a single telephoto camera. I've paid just over £1,700 for the Mavic 3 Classic, the DJI RC controller, so I don't have to use my mobile phone anymore, and an extra battery for the drone itself. Personally, I didn't bother with another Fly More package. There's nothing wrong with getting a Fly More package, but for the extra batteries, just the two batteries alone, you get as much flight time as what I did with three batteries from the Air 2. And most of the time I travel to a location, I send the drone up, I get the shots, I bring it down, and I never seem to find myself using a full battery. So let's talk about the stuff I like about the DJI Mavic 3 Classic. First of all, the quality of the camera on board speaks for itself. This is a Hasselblad camera with a fixed focal length of 24 millimeters. You're stuck at 24 millimeters because this is the DJI Mavic 3 Classic, not the DJI Mavic 3 Pro. Now you do have the option of a three times digital zoom, but I personally would prefer to not do it inside the camera and do it inside the software when it comes around to editing. A huge thing for me about this drone is having the variable aperture. We saw it on the DJI Mavic 3 Pro and Mavic 3 Cine. And for the most part, when it comes to actually focusing on the subject, aperture on drones doesn't really affect anything whatsoever. When you're filming or photographing anything at 24 millimeters and you're a fair distance away from the subject, having something at f2.8 or even f11, most things are going to be in focus at that point. But the great thing about having a variable aperture on this drone is that when you're up in the air, you don't have to crank the shutter to decrease the exposure or increase the ISO and get noise to increase the exposure. You can do it all with your aperture. Aperture. Unfortunately, the thing we are missing at the moment is ND filters for the Mavic 3 Classic. DJI have them coming out in the next few weeks, and I've been told personally by Polar Pro that they also have some in production. But if you've ever used ND filters before, you'll know that you try and expose the best you can whilst the drone is on the ground. You send the drone up and guaranteed the conditions change, and then you have to start looking at the shutter speed and also the ISO. Having the variable aperture set it to like f5.6, and then you can either increase the exposure or decrease the exposure just with the aperture. It's so flexible and I'm really looking forward to using that feature more and more. When it comes to D-Log, I've never had a drone that's ever shot in log. I've done Cine D-Light before and I've never had a drone that shot in 10-bit and not 8-bit. The Air 2S had this setup and people said amazing things about it and the Mavic 3 Classic is no different. The footage speaks for itself. The dynamic range isn't the best out there when it comes to other cameras, but for a drone itself, it's incredibly good. And as we all know, you have to have good light anyway in your scene to be able to make your footage look better. Having the obstacle avoidance a full 360 degrees around the drone is an absolute game changer in my opinion. It means that you can fly the drone in difficult places and be a little bit more confident that you're not gonna hit something above, something from the side. You can do the orbits very comfortably and know that you're not gonna hit anything whatsoever. Obviously, I wouldn't recommend it all the time. The obstacle avoidance is only active when using cine mode or normal mode and not when using sport mode. And using this drone, I can confidently fly through the trees and let's be honest, it looks like a great gimmick shot and even flying it backwards for an opening in the trees the obstacle avoidance is is excellent um, you can probably still crash it most likely there will be times no doubt when they will fail on you but for the most part we're pretty good with it now we also have master shots in the DJI Mavic 3 Classic. It's not something that I've really played with, but it's a good opportunity for anybody who goes to a new location and they don't really know what to film or what kind of movements to make with the drone. Master shots is a good opportunity to get you going. And one of the biggest features that I love inside the DJI Mavic 3 line is the ability to shoot in night mode. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to use it an incredible amount because the weather at home yeah, it's it's pretty rough at the moment. Um, yeah, you probably wouldn't see much if you could get a drone in the air. But as we all know from using drones in the past, anytime you get above the base ISO, the footage always starts to look really, really grainy. You start to lose your dynamic range. And from all the drones I've used in the past at night, I've never really had much success with them. But the DJI Mavic 3 Classic is amazing when it comes to shooting in night mode. 
In night mode we can shoot at a much higher ISO, but there's no option to go above 4K and there's no option for D-Log either. When looking at the footage, there is a little bit of softness in the image and this is most likely down to the noise reduction which is being done internally inside the drone. Some people may say they would be nice to have the option to turn the noise reduction off and maybe do your own noise reduction in post, but for the most part the footage is still excellent and it's still incredibly usable. For the most part, there isn't really anything which I don't like about the DJI Mavic 3 Classic at the moment. The controller that I have, the DJI RC, is much nicer to use. Both the drone and this controller is rather large going in my bag, but if you wanted something smaller, then I'd recommend going for the DJI Mini 3 Pro. And with the Classic, you are fixed with the 24 millimeter unless you use a digital zoom. So if you want that telephoto lens or the telephoto camera, then you will have to go for the DJI Mavic 3 Pro. But because of them two things, I do feel like it's a perfect fit in the line between the Mavic 3 Pro and also the Mavic Mini 3. Now I have had messages over the last 24 hours from people talking about the new drone laws inside the United Kingdom. This is because the Civil Aviation Authority have released a new statement to say that their new laws will not change in January 2023 and they will not be looking to recognize the new drone laws from the EU, which is part of the A1, A2 and A3 categories. Obviously the way to decide whether you should still buy a Mavic 3 Classic or not is to determine how you want to actually use the DJI Mavic 3. Obviously the DJI Mavic 3 Classic, the Mavic 3 Pro and even the Mini 3 will still be able to be used within the United Kingdom for the foreseeable future. And according to the Civil Aviation Authority, the transitional period that we are in at the moment in regards to our drone laws will continue and be extended through to 2026. And let's be honest, by 2026 or whenever these laws are going to be confirmed, there will be more drones out there than just the Mavic 3 Classic, Mavic 3 Pro and also the Mavic Mini 3. But obviously everyone's situation and their opinion may be different, but I'm thoroughly happy that I have actually bought a Mavic 3 Classic. And that's pretty much all there is from me today. I'm going to be doing a lot more videos about the DJI Mavic 3 Classic, going in depth to night mode when I get the opportunity to get out and get more footage and show you fully in depth what the Mavic 3 can do at night time. For those of you out there who's considering pulling the trigger on the DJI Mavic 3 Classic, I hope this video has helped you. If any of you have any questions about the Mavic 3 Classic or any of the drones out there, let me know down in the comment section below. If you want to see more content like this, then make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you do, I'll see you right there. Thank you very much for watching.